Hello, and welcome to the Mic Cues tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to learn some things about mic cues. Mic cues are similar to audio cues, except instead of targeting a track on your computer, mic cues take in live audio from a microphone or line level input connected to your audio interface. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you trippingly on the tongue. In this case, we're using a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 USB recording audio interface with a Shure SM58 microphone. But any compatible interface and any source of audio will work. The Device and Levels tab of the inspector looks very similar to how it looks for audio cues. The patch is a little different, though. It says Audio Input and Output Patch. These patches work the same as the eight patches for audio cues, and they can use the same devices, but they have to be set up separately in the mic section of settings, right here. A mic cue must use the same audio device for both input and output. So in our case, the mic is plugged into the Scarlett, and so are the speakers that the mic cue is assigned to. If you need to use one device for input and a separate device for output, you have to set up an aggregate audio device. You can learn more about that in the mic cue section of the QLab documentation. The ellipsis button is a shortcut to open the patch editor for the selected patch. The patch editor lets you name outputs, assign audio effects to cue outputs, route cue outputs to device outputs, and assign audio effects to device outputs. Clicking this Default Levels button sets the levels of the queue to the default levels set in the Mic section of Settings. What does this Set All Silent button do? That button does exactly what you think it will. Assigning gangs for mic cues works exactly the same as it does for audio cues. But da 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 No, I, I mean, never mind. The Visible Channels control allows you to set the number of output channels currently visible in the Matrix Mixer. Outputs, which are not displayed, are not disabled. They're simply hidden from view. In an audio cue, each row in the matrix mixer represents one channel of the targeted audio file. In a mic cue, each row represents one input on your audio device. QLab will automatically make a row for every input it recognizes. If, for example, you're using the Mac's built-in input, you'll see two rows, because the Mac supports two-channel input using the built-in microphone or mic input jack. If you're using, say, an RME Fireface 800 interface, you will see 28 rows, because the Fireface 800 has 28 inputs. Some are mic inputs, some are line level inputs, and some are digital inputs. The Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 that we're using here has two inputs, so mic cues using the Scarlett will have two rows. The rest of the matrix mixer works the same way it does in audio cues. The Trim and Audio Effects tabs also work the same as they do with audio cues. And you can find more info about those in the Intro to Audio tutorial.